Okay, for this starter problem, I'm hoping that this wasn't too tough. Raise your hand if you're feeling confident that you've got this one. Oh, not too many people. All right. Now, that could just be you just don't want to participate, or it could be you're really sincerely completely lost. Let's find out. So, what's inverse sine mean? Sine of some angle has to equal 1 over x. That's the first thing you do is a rewrite. How many of you started with a rewrite? Raise your hand if you did that. Okay, good. Then, I did tell you it was quadrant one, and anytime there's variables involved, just do it in quadrant one. Okay? So then, because you do get the variable, could be negative, it could be positive. So, anyway, uh, I'm going to draw my triangle, and sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And so then, what's the other side got to be? Some people just go, oh, it's got to be one. You don't know that. It's the square root of x squared and 1 squared. And if it's the longest side, you add them. And if you're finding out one of the not longest sides, you subtract. So who had figured out it was the square root of x squared minus 1? Oh, only a couple people. All right, you should be able to do that. We've had questions like this before on tests. Now, it wasn't this unit, but it's still something you're supposed to know how to do. All right, so now that I've drawn this, there's only one important angle. You should know that there's only one. It's always the central angle. So there's my central angle. Now, what are you actually supposed to do with this? Find the cosine of it. You see how from here it's actually really easy? How many of you are within one step of being able to do this question? You just were stuck on something. All right, how many of you were completely lost? Raise your hand if you were completely lost. All right. And then how many of you had it from the beginning? You knew that it was cosine of that square root of x squared minus 1 over x. Who had that? All right. So we're about, I don't know, most people seemed like they had the right answer. But a fair number of people were lost or had made one little leap wrong. Okay. Is there any questions you want to ask me about this? Imagine you had something like this again in the future. Is there any part you don't understand that you want me to do, go over? I could do another one like it. With whatever you'd like. Okay, I need to see hands then on this. And virtual hands too. Uh, who's feeling confident now that you've seen that, that you're good with this? You don't need to see any more on it. All right, online kids, just show me that you're actually there by raising your hand, even if you don't agree with the statement I just said. Okay. Well, then, judging by the number of hands that are raised, a lot of people have it, but not everybody. So we're going to try one more. Tangent of the inverse sine of x. Do you get that could be x over 1? And therefore, you've got two sides. Raise your hands if you're done with the problem. And that's most people, so we'll get rolling. So this one, you'd start the same way, except I did give you a hint to put it over one. Then I would draw my triangle in the first quadrant, because there's variables involved. Sine's opposite over hypotenuse, x over one. Third side, square root of x squared and one squared, which is just one. And then, is it the longest side? No, so you don't add them, you subtract them. And it's very similar. Tangent of that is toa opposite over adjacent. So this would equal x over square root of x squared minus 1. Now how many people had it right? Uh-oh. Obviously I made a mistake here somewhere. Please raise your hand and explain where I think the mistake is. Yes? Ooh, the biggest side is 
the other, the longest side. You are correct. I, I can't refute that. Good catch. Reverse these two because the longest side, you want the biggest side first because when you subtract something, you want the answer to not come out negative. So 1 minus x squared, good catch. It's kind of a weird problem. Usually that doesn't happen, but that happened. So good catch. Okay, so then this should be 1 minus x squared. Okay, now, whole different kind of question. Sine of 2 theta. Now, if I say theta is just 30 degrees, well, then it's just sine of 60 degrees. It's not, like, super complicated, okay? Because 2 theta, 2 times 30 is 60. I mean, that's, that's easy. But what if I replace the theta with not a normal angle? What if I say... Two, and then instead of the angle, I say a way to get the angle. Inverse cosine of x. That's similar to what we were just doing. My advice to you is first do this. Then go to the sheet and find sine of 2 theta. I hope you have it memorized and pounded on this one enough. You should know what sine of 2 theta is. If you don't, go look it up. All right, so let's see if you knew same deal. Cosine of some angle has to equal x, and I'm going to call it x over 1, so I have two sides. Draw my little triangle, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent is 1, hypotenuse is x, nope, the other way around, x down there, and 1 up here. Let's see if I can not forget that the 1 is the longest side. So when I go square root all, 1 squared minus x squared. Okay, then I'm supposed to go sine of 2, and that's the angle. This is weird. This is where I would hope you would go and say, okay, if I only was doing sine of it, that'd be easy. Do you get what I mean? If I just asked for sine, do you get how this would be sine of this would be just the opposite over the hypotenuse, the square root of 1 squared minus x squared over 1. So what actually is sine of 2 theta? You should have looked it up and said it's 2 sine of the angle cosine of the angle. So we know what sine of the angle is. Sine of the angle is opposite or hypotenuse. So square root of 1 squared is 1 minus x squared over hypotenuse 1 times the cosine of the angle, which is cosine adjacent of hypotenuse, which is x over 1. So cool. They're just over 1, so it doesn't really have a denominator. So it's just 2x times the square root of 1 minus x squared. Do you get how I just got it off the sheet? And then I just had to go find sine and cosine? It's not that bad, is it? Now that I've explained it, how many of you feel like you could handle that? All right, most hands going up. What else do you have to know? So many things. All right, uh, let's do one where you've got to find just one answer, okay? Inverse sine of 
negative one. Everybody find this one. Again, I'm kind of going through a process here. This is the kind where there's only one answer. Tommy, how do you know there's only one answer without me having to say it? Yeah, it's inverse streak. Inverse streak, you'll only get one answer. Evie, tell me why you rewrote it. And then tell me what you drew. All right. And then what? All right, and you could have narrowed it down a little bit. How could you have narrowed it down so that it was only a couple quadrants possible? Um, first, I thought the top three because stuff was on quadrants. All right, if sine is positive, it can't be here and it can't be here because sine is clearly negative. And then inverse sine is only allowed from here to here. So then this was out. So I hope you drew it in the third quadrant. Sine is opposite. Oh, wait a minute. What do you mean the third quadrant? Well, it can't actually be a triangle because opposite and hypotenuse are the same size. That means we're on a quadrantal. It's either here or it's here. And there's no negative involved at this point. So it's probably this point, but I'm just going to make sure. That point would be called 0, comma negative 1. Is the y negative 1? Yes, it is. Is this inverse trig? Oh, it is inverse trig. Did some of you say 3 pi over 2? Because you should have said negative pi over 2. Remember how inverse trig, you got to use negatives down there? You're in the negative zone? Is that a question? Okay. Thought you were raising your hand. All right. So I'm curious. How many of you remembered it, including the negative? How many of you got that one right? Okay. Who got fooled but only by the negative? All right. Don't forget that now. This is inverse trig. Any answer down in here in the third quadrant? you got to use negative angles. All right, so many things to know on this. I'm just going to keep going. Next, this is the kind where you're going to get two answers. Cosine of some angle is equal to negative root 3 over 2. The reason you're going to get two answers is because I only want the answers between 0 and 2 pi. And it can be 0 and it can't be 2 pi. OK, here's how you should have done this one. I think right away, okay, is it an inverse trig? Nope. So then I got four quadrants I can be in. Got to figure out which ones it can't be possible. Cosine's positive here and here, so those are out because we have cosine being negative. So then I draw my picture here. Cosine's adjacent over hypotenuse. Oh, yeah, this is the 1, 2, root 3 triangle. And what's across from the 1? 30, which is also known as pi over 6. But I don't put pi over 6 because... I want this angle, which is a bunch of pi over 6s, specifically 5 pi over 6. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Awesome. And then, <coughs> what if I wanted the other one? Well, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You know they're pi over 6s. You know it's down here. So instead of 6 pi over 6, which would be pi, you go one more notch, and it would be 7 pi over 6. How many had both answers right? Sweet. Now I'm going to change my directions and say, Give me all the solutions. Do you have to redo the problem totally? Nope. If I ask for all the solutions instead of just the solutions between 0 and 2 pi, does definitely add to your answer. Mr. Shaw, do you know what I'm supposed to add to both sides? They're both parts? <laughs> okay, that's, that's a big whatever. So plus 2 pi k plus 2 pi k 
And why did I pick 2 pi? Because it's the period. And if you move over exactly 2 pi, then you're, you're good. You've got a new, another answer. All right, so you got to remember how to add plus 2 pi k when you want all solutions. All right. And now imagine, this is a little bit twisted, but imagine that the problem actually had been cosine of 2 theta was equal to negative root 3 over 2. Would that change the graph's period? Yes, it would. So now you would have done a u substitution, and you'd have u equals this and u equals that. Now go ahead and fix it from there. If this had been an even more complicated question, you'd still have those two answers, kind of. But now you've got to deal with the fact that it's actually 2 theta right there. And this u tells you you aren't done yet. All right, I'll give you a little bit of time on this one. Uh, while you're working on that, let's get attendance done here. That you should have started with a 2 theta here because you had let u be 2 theta, and you'd come to this point, and then you will multiply everything by a half, and 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 a half. And you'd simplify down to 5 pi over 12 plus, the 2's cancel here, pi k, and 7 pi over 12 plus pi k. And there's my two answers. No, wait, that's all the solutions if they wanted it between 0 and 2 pi. And now the last change, same exact problem. But now what if they said, instead of all solutions, I want the answers between 0 and 2 pi. Well, this is two of the answers, but how many are there supposed to be? Four. How do you know that? Because there's a two right here. And that doubles how often the thing will get done with. It squishes it down and it finishes in a shorter time. So the point is, it'll get through two whole cycles, and there will be four answers. So you should have known there's four answers when I said that. What are the four answers? Well, these are two of them. Use the term generator part of this and figure out the other two answers. Okay, so the way you ask yourself if you're, if you're done yet is you say, okay, what if I put in a 1 for k? What if I put a 1 right here? Can I add pi to this? And then will it stay less than 2 pi? Yeah, because this one's less than pi, so if I add pi to it, it's going to be pi plus a little more, but it won't be 2 pi or bigger. So yeah, I can add those together. And so I get, well, I'm going to call it 12 pi over 12. 12 pi over 12 is the same equal, is the same equivalence to pi. So now I can say 12 pi and 5 pi is 17 pi over 12. And here I'm going to add 12 pi over 12. And then that's going to be 19 pi over 12. And I've got four answers there that I circled in red. Now, I get it's kind of confusing on whether or not you should keep going and like add another one. If I had added one more pi, they both would have gone over 2 pi. Think about it this way. If this is over 1 pi right now, which they are, then if I add another pi to it, it's going to be too big. All right. I think that's the toughest kind. So I'm going to give you one more like that. See if you can do it from beginning and end. Cosine of three theta 
equals negative 1. begging for somebody to give them a ticket. All right, so this, I let u equal that. Cosine of u is equal to negative 1. Let u equal 3 theta. Then I figure out what that answer is. I think the picture on this one helps me, so I'm going to just show you quick. This is what sine does, right? And if I want, where is sine negative 1? It does happen, but not real often. Whenever it gets to its lowest point, it's hitting negative 1. All right, so that's kind of the picture of what this is. Could you go over and do it over here? Yeah, for sure. You can make yourself a circle trig drawing with the ASPC on it. And then I start thinking about where is cosine negative, so it can't be here and it can't be here. Where is inverse cosine? Oh, wait, this is, in, this is not inverse cosine. Okay, so then there's two possible places that are going to have answers here. Okay, cosine is negative. Wait a minute. Hmm. Can't draw a triangle. Then you come to the conclusion it's got to be a quadrantal. It's either here, here, or here. And I want cosine to be negative 1. So that means at, only at a spot where there's negatives could I possibly be right, so it can't be here. There is a negative here. It's negative 1, 0. And there's also a negative here, 0, comma, negative 1. And this comes down to, do you know that cosine is the x? Because if you do, you'll know it's this point, which is pi. But now, that's a super simple answer. Did I want it to be a super simple answer? I wanted the answers between 0 and 2 pi. If I want the answers between 0 and 2 pi, I can't just stop here because u equals pi. I got to now switch the u. The U helped because it, it reminded me, oh, wait, Mr. Server, you're not actually done yet. U is 3 theta. So 3 theta equals pi. And then I got to add that plus 2 pi k thing. And you might be saying, but Mr. Server, the period isn't 2 pi. I know. This one third I'm going to multiply everything by will fix that. And now I have theta equals pi over 3 is the actual period of this thing. Plus, no wait, it's not, sorry. Pi over 3 is part of the answer. And then the period part is this. 2 pi over 3 times k. And now, it all depends on how many answers you want. Pi over 3 is your first answer. And then, how many do I want? Well, I'm going to have triple normal. Why? Because there was a 3 here. Normally, there's only one answer between 0 and 2 pi. There's cosine's normal period. There's only one answer in there. See, right there. But because I'm drawing it really scrunched together, it'll hit three times. So my first answer is pi over 3, the one I already got. My second answer, I put in a 1 here. 2 pi over 3 plus 1 pi over 3 is 4 pi over 3. That's my second answer. And then I can put a 2 here. For my k. k is 2. I got 4 pi over 3 plus 1 is 5 pi over 3. And I'm going to just make sure I didn't go over 2 pi. 6 pi over 3 would be 2 pi. So I stayed under 2 pi. There would have normally only been one answer to this. Why? Because it's when does it hit the low spot? Only once during the first 2 pi does it hit the low spot. So there's only one answer normally. Times it by 3. Three answers this time. And there they are. Just making sure. Three pi over, two pi over three plus one. Uh oh. I think I thought this was a two pi over three right here. That's a one pi over three plus two pi over three makes three pi over three. Sorry about that. Not four pi over three. How many of you noticed that, but you didn't know if you were right, so you didn't say anything? Okay. Don't be shy about that. Just raise your hand and say, I, um, wait, hold on. 
at least I caught it. Two pi over three plus one is three pi over three. And also, if you look at the pattern, one pi over three, three pi over three, and five pi over three kind of makes more sense now. Know what I mean? Okay, who had that? One pi over three, three pi over three, and five pi over three. All right. Any questions so far? All right, we've covered a lot of stuff. Um, and I think this is the part where it'd be good to uh, kind of shake up the, um, the order of things and uh, not just do problems that I give you up front the whole time. Instead, let's have you, oh, there's one more that I really ought to get to. Remember the kind where you factor them? Sine squared x plus 2 sine x plus 1 equals 0. That one is just begging to be factored. And if you can factor it, well, you should. Go ahead, factor that out, and you'll be able to solve it. Now, you can use a u substitution, but I personally think it's easier to just straight up factor it. Sine x, sine x. That'll make sine squared when I multiply them. They're all pluses here, so it's a plus and a plus. And this is a 1, which makes it super simple. It's got to be a 1 and a 1. There we go. And then this part has to equal 0, and then this part has to equal 0, but they're identical, so, you know. So then sine x plus 1 has to equal 0. Sine x equals negative 1. Huh, can we just do something like this? Sine is the y. Where is y negative 1? I feel like we're here. Was this an inverse trig question? No, it was not. So then, what's the answer? 3 pi over 2. How many of you had 3 pi over 2? All right. So do you get as if the, these things could be anything as long as they end up equaling 0, then you know what's inside each parenthesis has to equal 0. So what if I make one of them uh, cosine of theta uh, plus 1? And what if I make one of them 2 sine squared theta? Minus 1. Both parts get answers. Remember, I warned you in this chapter, it's very possible for there to be no solution. I'm not saying that's the case here, but give this, give this one a try and try to find all the answers that you can. Okay, hope you knew that part can be set equal to 0. And this part can be set equal to 0. I'll do the one on the right first because it's easier. Cosine of some angle equals negative 1. Oh, I'm starting to get faster at these. Where's cosine negative 1? Well, cosine's the x. So really, where's x negative 1? Oh, it's that spot. And that's theta equals pi. But Mr. Server, you told us that there's usually two answers to those kind of problems. Well, usually there is, but there's only one answer this time. Is there, an, is there another spot where x equals negative 1? Is this a spot where x equals negative 1? No. Those are both positive. Is that where a spot where x equals negative 1? No. So these are all out. So there's only one answer. Now, what if I had said all the solutions? How would you change your answer? Plus 2 pi k. 
All right, and how about this one? I'm going to add one to both sides, and I get 2 sine squared theta equals 1. Then I'm going to subtract, or sorry, divide by 2 on both sides. Sine squared theta equals 1 half. Now I'm going to square root both sides. Square root of sine squared is the absolute value of sine. I hope you guys remember there's two answers for this. One with plus square root of a half, and the other is with minus square root of a half. So sine of theta equals square root of 1, which is really just 1, over root 2. I think you'll like that better because it'll come out to a triangle you'll recognize. And then the other answer is sine of theta equals negative 1 over root 2. Holy cow, look at all the answers. Sine is positive, so then it's all students take calc. So sine is positive, it must be, can't be here, can't be here. And if I draw my triangles right, opposite, hypotenuse, I'm doing this one right now. Uh, this must be. 1, 1, root 2, so that's 45, so it's pi over 4. And this other one, that's going to be where I draw it negative. Wait a minute. Hold on. I'm not, I'm, I'm not doing this one yet. i got to find the other answer for this first one. So this one's also got an answer in this quadrant. And... This one was pi over 4. This one's going to be 3 pi over 4. So there's the two answers that come from this one. And now i got to say sine is negative all that. So again, don't have to reinvent the wheel. If sine's going to be negative, it can't be here and it can't be here, I already know these are going to be pi over 4's. So this is going to be 4 pi over 4 plus a little more. 5 pi over 4. And one more answer in here. Uh, 6 pi over 4 is there. 7 pi over 4. One pi over 4. Three pi over 4. Five pi over 4. And seven pi over 4. Serious math. How many of you feel like you could do that? Almost every hand. Awesome. All right. Online kids, you guys need to put your hands up faster. Maybe you just don't know how to do it, but I think you do. Just be when I say put up your hands, I don't want to have to say virtual hands every time because I'm aware and you're aware that I can't see your actual hand. All right. So um, I now have a review worksheet. Uh, that I am about to release to you right now. And it has a key, which I will also release to you right now. This is the only thing you should be worried about right now, is the test. The lab that was due a few weeks ago, we're going to grade it probably on Monday, but it kind of depends. So, sorry, not Monday. After the little mini weekend in the middle of the week, which is Wednesday, uh, Thursday, it's very possible to test or take the grade the lab first. Yes? Yeah, I see it. It's just making me nervous that I. Okay, for the cosine one, oh, my head hurts. Okay, there's so many answers for this. So cosine of negative one, that one was, yes, up here. I think you're just saying that I already had this answer, and I never put that in the list. You're right, that's one of the answers. It's not one of the answers for the, for the left. It's, all of these answers were just for the left side. And this was the answer for the right side. All of the answers, yep. Good catch. Okay. So, uh, I, no, 
I was rolling over here when somebody thought of the good point to make that there was one other answer in that problem that I should put at the end also to sum it up. And I'm trying to get there. I'm opening up the folder. Today's date is 5 slash 10. And I'd like you to look at this and make sure I think it's different than the one I had you do before. It's 15.2 quiz. I had you do something like that, but I think these are different. Would you look at it, please, and tell me? Do you feel like they're different? Are they? Yeah. Okay. Good. So then this is one last chance to practice with a key. Again, you could thank the pandemic for that. We don't normally, on days like this, we would just say, you have to make up your own review. We told you what was on the test by what we did in class. You do your own practice problems. And kids would typically go back to old homework problems that they had skipped before and maybe do some of those. But you've got them all in one place. This is a real blessing. Use it. And it'll make your life easier. Just be aware that in AP Calc next year, they don't give you a nice practice test right before the test. And I have a feeling next year we're going to be a little more back to normal. All right, that's all I have for the video. Unless you have, maybe I'll wait to see your comment first. Okay, video doesn't need that part, so.